up to the age of 30, 40, all the youngsters, they wear black t shirts even until midnight, I was shocked as uh, who goes to cafe at midnight? Hundreds, uh, if even thousands of Starbucks in Seoul. Everyone is so silent, so calm, looking into their phone. But whenever there is an empty seat, they jump like lions. <laughs> and in less than a half of a second, the seat is gone. We went there with quite an expectation on Gangnam and Italian and they were probably the two areas that deceived us the most. Yeah. We even had the worst pina colada oh, ever in God. the history of mankind. Like liquid plastic, it was awful. At the beginning I thought, my God, was there some violence going on? Do you really have to bother the whole population? Tourists included. In Korean, activating vibrations and sound and like if it's the end of the world to tell me it's hot uh, please carry a bottle of water even <laughs> though you should say they were not Koreans that because is. many Koreans were really upset with us because they say Koreans don't eat on the street I would go there now and stuff myself <laughs> like a pig I'm only now <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. We visited South Korea in the summer and we noted down a, a number of uh, cultural differences or just tips that we would like to share with you where someone who is preparing a trip there uh, might find itself unprepared for. We would like also to open a discussion with the locals who seem to follow our channel. Some of the things we noticed, uh, you will find them in other Southeast Asian or uh, Far East Asian countries but some others are not. In case you're interested to know more about our experience visiting Seoul, we visited there during the summer, check out our video up there. Now, let's break it down for you. Start with the cultural differences. Maybe the first thing you will notice uh, when getting there, you need money, you need to take transports. Now, for the money, do not necessarily rely on the ATM machines inside the metro stations because they're not necessarily the ones that give you the best treatment. First of all, they force you to withdraw very small amounts and they apply very high fees. If you walk on the street, you enter a couple of banks, you try the ATM machines there, you will have a much better treatment. You will be surprised how much less fee you will pay. Yeah, indeed, the reason why he mentioned it is because we suggest uh, if you visit so you take public transport, try to use the card to top up your transport card. You have to use cash, you, you cannot really use the card. And the AT machine next to the metro station normally they charge like 3 or 4 percent. Uh, it's uh, quite a lot. But if it's outside, uh, it's like fixed amount, so you can visit a bit uh, higher uh, amount, so it kind of uh, dilute uh, the ATM fees. And if we remain in, in, the, in the subject of public transport, I took the metro in Beijing in 2007. I didn't speak any Chinese at that time and I had no problems. I took the metro in many cities in the world. Honestly, this is the first time it is difficult to take the metro for one simple reason. When you have to decide the direction that you have to take, at the first instance, you are confronted with the two directions written in Korean characters. The names in Western characters do not appear necessarily when you have the, the topic point where you need to change the direction and it's not easy to navigate yourself with the Korean language and the Korean uh, alphabet because uh, we do not speak Korean so we did have quite some troubles to, to, to decide which direction we had to take each time. Be careful, compare your notes out from your phone with the character listed in the metro station. We started with counting the number of characters, but then we soon realized that, mm, right, it doesn't really work out that way. Google Map, unfortunately, doesn't work so well in Seoul. Strangely, Google Map can show you the public transport options. It may not be the best one, but still give you the options. But then if you have to go somewhere on foot, it just cannot show the route on foot. As a matter of fact, we use a local app which is called Kakao. The only disadvantage with the app is that when you showcase the direction, it's written in Korean language, so it makes it uh, very difficult to follow. Yeah, the whole navigation, honestly, you get not um, enough information on Google Maps, but they are in a language you can understand, or you get more detailed information on Kakao, but they are in Korean. <laughs> So basically we had to use both at the same time. It's really not very practical. And then about the sitting in the metro, we were really having a lot of fun. Everyone is so silent, so calm, looking into their phones and everything. But whenever there is an empty seat, they jump 
like lions <laughs> and in less than a half of a second the city is gone okay so like lions but facial expression wise i think it's quite uh, zen like i don't care i'm looking at my phone on the tube so with my side uh side view i notice there's a seat becomes available so they immediately take it over and at the same time they try to avoid you know eye contact you know they don't want to appear that they are aggressively or they are paying attention already to the seat and then they sit there i take the seat and start to watch their phone again so it's quite a, a, a interesting thing but for the sake of completeness we were happy to notice that there is a very high degree of respect for the elderly so nobody dares to sit on the seats reserved to the elderly and more than once we were a bit abused by the situations where the elderly comes on board and they just sit on whatever seat and they don't occupy their own reserved seat so you've got people standing in front of the empty elderly seat while the elderly are sitting on the normal people's seat the situation is just ridiculous yeah i think probably it's related to how korean people respected the elderly uh, but it's kind of social uh... in general in asia there is uh, a very different and you can notice compared to Western countries, a yeah. much higher degree of respect for the elderly. Yeah, so even the young people, uh, the, uh, the elderly section is empty, they can take it, but they choose not to. Whereas in Western societies, for example, we live in London for so long, even if there is you know, the priority seat, when it's available and people notice there's nobody need that, the public can still take it. Uh, and that, of course, when the, the someone in need, that when you can over you leave your your seat, yeah. which is more or less what I notice normally in Taipei, for example, they do sit on the reserved seats, but then if there is someone in need, they immediately uh, give away the seat. For the scenes in the metro, I'm quite surprised to find out uh, there's not so much commercial vibe in the tube. Uh, coming from uh, Western societies, uh, like in London or in Paris, when we take like a metro the tube, we can see a lot of uh, advertisements uh, showing the companies, the products, etc. to feel like, oh my god, there are a lot of business going on. Whereas in Seoul, when I take the metro, we see a lot of uh, cultural education videos and ads to tell you in certain situations how should you behave yeah, exactly. in case of fire how you should behave the etiquette how you should treat the other people and this kind of stuff there's a lot of uh, educational videos instead of using those videos to promote whatever product another thing that surprised us is that the fare in on a bus ride is higher than the fare on a metro ride which is normally not the case in other countries. And bus. I'm not saying that the bus is expensive. Uh, bus and metro are very cheap and uh, a very good uh, transport system. I have to say the bus network is very convenient. And you know what? There's even air conditioning in the waiting room for the bus station. Yeah, no? there are some bus station which are kind of some closed boxes. But inside there's air conditioning, screens, re you can recharge your phone, you can check with the cameras when the bus is arriving in case that the angle is not right, the timetable of the bus, that's quite amazing. Uber in comparison to the public transport, the price is really reasonable compared to the, the price yeah, difference probably, in Western yeah. countries. Double yeah. than the, the, the bus. Yeah, paper. a little bit double. So and the public transport. We have a small favor to ask you. Can you please subscribe to our channel? Because we are experiencing a lot of views for our videos and shorts, but then people are too lazy to click the subscribe <laughs> button and we need the subscriptions as well. Your support will mean a lot to us with all our efforts put into it. Uh, we really want to continue this journey with you, uh, interact with you and uh, to provide more interesting and relevant contents to you as well. So please support us. We will eat more food. <laughs> yes, which are your favorite areas in Seoul? I think there's a difference between before I arrived in Seoul versus after my visit. So we have watched a lot of YouTube videos just to prepare ourselves for our first time visiting Seoul, like which area we should go. Yeah, so, so we went there with quite an expectation on Gangnam and Itaewon, and they were probably the two areas that this Received us as the most. <laughs> Indeed. Let's start with Kanan. But I, I couldn't explain why we were so deceived. Maybe the expectations were, was high, but we walked on the street a lot. We did cover many kilometers on food. We tried to do the streets that the, the tourist books and the, the guides would were indicating like the most interesting ones and we couldn't find the vibes. Yeah, there were places where you can go inside, but 
on the street it doesn't give the vibe of other areas of Seoul except if you're into surgery <laughs> indeed you can see a lot a lot of uh, advertisement also we bumped into someone with yeah uh, we with bumped into someone who ju just had a surgery that day probably she was all <laughs> yeah covered with bandage and accompanied by the daughter I think. you know as a matter of fact at the beginning i thought my god was there some violence going on so, and then you said right you know kind of very famous for the plastic surgery it's the highest bandage. concentration of surgery plastic surgery clinics in the world is in that area really. yeah uh, we do notice that in kind of uh area there are a lot of uh, you know big Big brand retail shops have been closed. Huh? I yeah, the the, COVID, the, uh, the the most famous street for luxury shop. There's many many shops are closed. We even dressed up huh, to <laughs> work in the area. Totally useless. But unfortunately, yeah, we we well unless we were in to go into a club or 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 a fancy restaurant, but that was not the case for that day. So that's the Kandam area. Uh, and the other big deception was Itaewon and Homo Hill because yeah. it's the highest concentration of LGBT bars and clubs. So we were expecting on a Friday night to see some crowd, to see the people and whatever. There were many bars, they were basically all empty. There were two, three, five people each one. Yeah. And we even had the worst piña colada oh, ever in God. the history of mankind. Don't I don't know started. how we didn't die with that piña colada. Well, I didn't want to go to that one. I feel like, okay, I already checked Google Map, even if people don't use Google Map that much. But for that particular pub, the review was not very high. But then there are some people saw us hesitating and then the owners start trying to uh, convincing us. I said, okay, right, let's just you know, have a drink over there. But I didn't know that they may even use some expired uh, a coconut to drink over there. It's really, as you said, the worst ever. Just drinking like liquid plastic. I think the worst two drinks of the holiday were that piña colada and the coffee you bought in the 7-Eleven oh, on right. top of the uh, of the mountain. The Nansan, Nansan, indeed. In, in like liquid plastic. It was <laughs> awful. It's pre-made, it's not freshly brewed, so it's kind of packaged. I even choose a premium style and it just tastes like awful. Probably is really one of the worst coffee I have ever had. After that bad experience at the bar, we went to another one. We tried to mingle with local Korean uh, Did we try? <laughs> Well, the thing is, they were so concentrated in their own conversations, they didn't even pay attention to, to us. We feel like we are just non-existent. <laughs> and uh, there are not so many people there either. No, so in, in general, I feel like the Homo Hill, or the Rainbow Streets are a bit dead. <laughs> yeah, unless it gets alive only at 2 a.m., which is not exactly the time where we are alive ourselves. Yeah, so we stayed until almost midnight. Still, yeah. there were not so many people over cool. there. So it's, a little bit of a letdown. We found our favorite areas, for example, Hongdae and uh, Yeonandong, uh, test to our Korean language for the names. It's wow. full of life, very vibrant, very young, but at the same time, very charming, except the fact that nobody was wearing colors. But the rest of the streets is colored enough. So yeah. absolutely, we wouldn't hesitate to, to, to go back. We stayed in the area of Myeongdong. Uh, our hotel is next to Nat Daemun. However, at night, we find it's less charming. Indeed, we had a Myeongdong that market we can go to. There are a lot of, lot of people visiting there. Even Korean though, you <laughs> should say, they were not Koreans. Exactly. Because many Koreans were really upset with us because they say Koreans don't eat on the street. That's just for tourists. I really, yeah, it's true. It's probably it was busy 90% tourists even more but in those areas with those office and big buildings without that market it would have been dead so yeah. I'm happy there was that market and then at the end of the day yes some of the food was Korean after all it's an easy way to start your introduction to Korean food and finally I don't find it such a big scene to eat on the street and to have some street food there are many other countries like Taiwan where eating in night markets is like a religion. The food is not the healthiest, true, but it's a funny experience. And Taiwanese are not shy or are not ashamed to admit that they like to go to the night market. So I'm a bit surprised of the reaction of some Koreans to our video saying, oh, you shouldn't eat in night market in, on the street. Koreans never eat on the street. After all, we eat all our meals sitting down in a restaurant. We just try a couple of snacks in, in open markets, but it's fun to go. 
Absolutely. I think probably the street food affection comes from our experience living in London. The food market is really somewhere you can taste uh, different uh, offerings uh, and also you can get the atmosphere with uh, the, the local people. So to us, that's how we can experience the local culture. Yeah, quite surprising was uh, how much they use cheese on street food. It's not something you expect to find in Asia because in the other Asian countries, the presence of cheese is confined into Western supermarkets markets and Koreans really like to top up with cheese some of their own recipes. So basically you find some Korean traditional food revisited with some melted cheese on top. I have to say quite surprising. I don't know about the quality of the cheese they use and if it's locally produced or imported because I think the food was uh, tasty enough not to try the cheese version. But... Yeah, as Korean people mention themselves as well, in Korea, they pick up the latest trend quite fast. Even in China, nowadays, cheese culture is becoming quite popular as well. Uh, for example, in bubble teas, in some bread as well. Of course, it's kind of like light taste cheese, not like the heavy well, like blue cheese. We realized that the uh, Korean tasting palate probably is more on the sweet side than the savory side because we had a breakfast in one of the most popular uh, breakfast places uh, with the French toast. Uh, they have uh, the French toast with so many different uh, stuffings uh, in the middle. I chose the one with the uh, uh, bulgogi beef and you chose the... Just egg, egg and ham. Egg and ham. So we had a big bite. And what did you find? <laughs> it's <a> sweet. <laughs> it's but sweet. even the dessert, their yeah. own restaurants, the marination of uh, food and vegetables. Yeah, there is often some sweetness that comes with them. Yeah, I think sugar intake level must be very high in Korea. Now about going to restaurants, be aware that sometimes the queue system to get a table works with a local phone number. If you don't have a local phone number, you cannot tap in the pad in front of the restaurant your request for booking a table because it comes with the phone number on which they will then notify you that the table is available. So you need to talk to the waiter, to the waitress and ask them to set you in manually in the system. Otherwise you will not uh, get the table. How should you order? What happens when you order one or two dishes? You will surprisingly find out that there are 30 more dishes on your table as well. All complimentary. <laughs> Basically, as soon as you sit down in a restaurant, they could start to bring on the table complimentary dishes. And they're very good ones. It's uh, fermented vegetables, healthy and good stuff. And you end up having your table full of dishes, like a buffet is created on your table, even though you haven't even received the dish you ordered. So be careful. If you're not too hungry, order just one thing each because that's gonna be more than enough for a meal. Although you have to be careful that a lot of the restaurants will ask you to order at least one main each. If you say two people going to the restaurant, you only one main, maybe that's not allowed. Huh? What about uh, barbecues that you love so much? Yeah, you know, I want to try, okay, how the local, uh, the real Korean barbecue tastes like in Korea. Shockingly, the price is not as low as I thought, huh? because yeah. in Europe, for example, the, the Korean barbecue is quite expensive. But then in Seoul, in Korea, it's still very expensive. But I had to say the meat, uh, the taste itself is very, very the, good. The meat was among the best meat we had, really. Normally, the, the staff will prepare the meat to the right level for you, so you don't have to do it on your own, because there might be a mistake. If you visit Korea... And you're not vegetarian. And you're not vegetarian. You should try their Korean barbecue. Probably one small reservation from me is that the diversity is not as wide as I, I thought. Uh, we visited so for seven days. Probably after a few days, we feel a little bit uh, limited already for food uh, options. Of course, uh, based on research, we knew you can try different international cuisines in the areas like Ixodom, but uh, it's not so easy to find. Huh? What do you think? After a while, you start to turn around the same family of tastes and you need to find some escape, which is possible. Seoul is a big city, so... Nevertheless, uh, we we love the, the, the food. Oh, yeah. I would go there now and stuff myself <laughs> like a pig. I'm only now. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, it's, 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 it's not even 5 p.m. I want to eat. <laughs> In the restaurant, we find out that, uh, you know, self-serve facilities are getting more and more popular in so compared to Europe. Uh, now, even like they don't need staff to take your orders or cashier because 
We just put the machine out there with all the menu options on the screen. You choose your option, you make your order, you pay yourself uh, with the payment machine over there as well. And then the kitchen receives the order and you get served immediately. Yeah, with, in some restaurants, the machine is on each table. In some other restaurants, it's outside the restaurant. Yeah. So yeah. you might need to do it yourself, which is in a way uh, easier for us because then you select your language and sometimes you see even the images, the explanation for each food. You can do your order, pay, and you're done. Yeah, so it's really, really convenient. Uh, you would be surprised of the price of fruits. Fresh fruits were quite expensive. We the same price as uh, London, as Brussels, as Paris. Yeah, we, we are wondering, is it true that in Korea you don't produce so much fruit? I grew up eating fruit almost like uh, every day. I, I cannot live without fruit. But uh, when we arrived in Seoul, I tried to find it. First of all, it's quite difficult to find a fruit shop. Even in the supermarket, we went to the Lot Mart. It's a very big uh, hypermarket. Still, there are not so many options for fruit. That's quite a big shop to me. And the coffee, as in many Asian countries, is expensive. So you will find that the food is relatively accessible and cheap. The coffee places can be quite expensive. So you might end up spending as much as you would spend in London for the coffee. Don't be scared if you enter and you only see the menu of the coffee place in Korean. Just ask for an English version and they will have a paper for you to help you out. Koreans are very nice, so the, you will not have any problem. You will not find yourself uh, embarrassed. And we were quite astonished to find out that there was no matcha or very little. In many other Asian countries, like in Taiwan, in Thailand, in China, you find a lot of matcha based products. They're really good, they're healthy, you can really decline them in many different ways. Koreans don't indicate matcha almost ever in their menu, and sometimes they do, but they call it green tea. <laughs> they don't want to call it matcha. We found that a little bit weird. I don't know whether it's related to you know, the political reasons, uh, the relationship be between Korea and Japan. And if you're looking for a Starbucks, will you find one? <laughs> I think you will be surprised when you find out there are hundreds, uh, even thousands of Starbucks in Seoul. Even on the same street, uh, there can be three or four uh, Starbucks in Europe, for example. Just having one Starbucks reserve is already quite <laughs> exceptional. However, in Seoul, you can find Starbucks reserve almost everywhere, even inside our hotel, right? <laughs> the seventh floor. <laughs> and we even offer you afternoon tea, special blend of uh, tea or coffee options as well. Uh, all quite interesting. What Starbucks is doing, at least in Seoul, we're probably not other uh, Asian countries is positioning itself to be competitive also on the tea bubble tea market. Carry on with the coffee topic, uh, a few uh, cultural difference to me, uh, which is quite shocking, is that their cafe is open until very late. Oh yeah, that was even so until midnight. I was shocked. I said, like, who goes to cafe at midnight? The cafes are full very late. Associating caffeine with late hours is a bit strange for yeah. me. But I read that uh, Koreans among those people who sleep the least. I'm not sure it's very healthy to have uh, that kind of lifestyle. A lot of cafes actually impose a policy that you have to order a hot drink to get a table. We were in one of the cafes and uh, we just want to have one coffee because it's quite late in the afternoon and we order dessert. And then he told us, no, sorry, it's not allowed. You have to order at least one drink each for the seat. So that's something, you know, worth checking out before you get seated. Then we were street. shocked uh, how colorful the people were dressed. <laughs> Meaning we were the only ones wearing color in every kind of situation. So you could find us in the middle of a crowded metro or in a crowded street. <laughs> because we found out that up to the age of 30, 40, all the youngsters, they wear black t-shirts. Almost all of them. And with a little minority, they were dark blue or white or gray. I mean, there were no colors, zero. Yeah, yeah, indeed. No offense to, uh, to Korean people, but uh, the scenes we saw in the metro, uh, the public, first of all, they are so quiet, they are so silent. And they're all almost, black. <laughs> uh, almost all of them dressed in similar style, black or white, very plain color on t shirts hairstyle tend to be similar as well, no? Uh, it's a particular style there. And, you know, people all play with their phones. So if you feel like, hmm, am I so inappropriate <laughs> as a foreigner? Sometimes when we speak to each other, I feel like, 
Right, maybe we should just use sign, <laughs> even if it's a public place. The alert messages that we received wow. on our Korean numbers during that week in Korea. So they have this system, which has been implemented also in Europe now, where the public authorities can send messages to all the phones connected and, and turned on at that moment. What was shocking is that the message came in with a very loud sound, with a vibration which I don't have on my phone because I deactivate it, but somehow the Korean authorities managed to make my phone vibrate, only to find out that some of the messages were not deserving an alert. So basically, you get the message, you get scared, it's in Korean, you need to Google Translate it. Screenshot and Google Translate. <laughs> and then you find out that, ah, it's hot, uh, please carry a bottle of water. or Ah, that guy that disappeared a few days ago, they found him now. Okay, do you really have to bother the whole population, tourists included, in Korean, activating vibrations and sound and like if it's the end of the world to tell me that you found back this guy? Yeah, that's quite surprising. We understand it's important to inform the public some critical information for oh, the yeah, Imagine a earthquake, tsunami, I don't even want to mention uh, a war. Those are situations where you would like to be uh, informed as soon as possible. But not about normal messages. Don't send them as an alert. That kind of emphasis with sounds and vibration and it, the sounds are really strong. You see your telephone doing things that you never saw before because the message pushes up. We didn't know what to expect so we were quite shocked that we were like is there some emergency we need to check it out as in Korean language and then we did the Google translation we were like it's hot. okay it's hot. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Yeah okay. did you take the bottle? Yeah okay fine. If you are based in Korea in summer when it's very hot and you have to wait quite some time for the crossing, is there something can help you? Yeah, it's, uh, I never saw this before. They put some uh, uh, big umbrellas uh, on the corners of the big crossings and you can repair yourself under these big umbrellas from the sun. Yeah, of course uh, a lot of local Koreans, they have this mini <laughs> fan, uh, electric fan, so you can hold us again, have some cool air, but then if you don't have one, you can stay under the umbrella. Talking about the heat, many people told us we were crazy to go there in August because it's too hot. Honestly, it was hot, but it was not unbearable hot. It's not as unbearable as uh, August in Taipei or Thailand, yeah. Yeah, Southeast Asia. Yeah, so the temperature we are looking at uh, when we were there this summer was around 32, 33 maximum. So it's a little bit stuffy, but it is bearable. Uh, it's not like 38. Another thing is uh, green people really have very good skin. They have a lot of, lot of facial masks. <laughs> it's not even sold by one or two, they are sold in dozens, like uh, tens of tens of uh, facial masks. Even in the uh, Myeongdong Nut Market, for example, we thought, okay, there will be a lot of food stalls and uh, a lot of like restaurants, but you know what? There are like so many skincare shops everywhere and also accessories as well. Huh? Like the accessory, there are like mountains, mountains of the jewelry, etc. So it's very impressive. Right? I think it's a lot, a lot of... <laughs> so we put a lot of stuff on the table. What we would like to know is what do you think? Did we go wrong? Do you agree? You don't agree? Did we miss something? Don't hesitate to interact with us because uh, cultural differences, what makes a country unique, it's what really interests us and we are really open to learn and to correct our mistakes and to take it better for next time. And yes, there's going to be a next time in Korea very soon in a few months. We're going to try to live there for an entire month and we will report on that with a bit more details. So for now, stay tuned! <laughs> Thank you so much for your time watching this video. So we hope you enjoy it and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!